Hey, welcome everyone to the ARCHICAD user monthly webinar. Uh, this is Eric Bobro, and we have a very special presentation or working session today. Uh, we'll be looking at some different options for visualization within ARCHICAD. Now, let me know that you can see my screen, which has a um, nice mountain home designed by Steve Nickel in Colorado. Let me know that you can see that and that you can hear me well type into the questions uh, area and also tell us where you're calling in from. It's always fun to see uh, just how far we reach in the live session. <clears throat> so I see uh, you know, Mark and Don and uh, Walter, Mark. So Seattle and Quadra Island, BC, and uh, a couple of you, no, Mark is in Seattle twice. Uh, Todd, yeah, Atlanta. Okay, so we've got a lot of people from all over. U.S. and then we have Tasmania. So Malcolm, welcome. You're up early. Um, Bob, all right. John, all right. And Alec, Alexis from St. Lucia. So we are definitely in the. Uh, I guess that's Caribbean, as far as I vaguely remember. Um, all right. And uh, Mark Johannesburg. Oh, you said Mark, you're down in uh, South Africa. All right. So we are there. Yeah. I know I have two of our guests from uh, Holland um, who will be presenting a little later. So to reveal a little mystery, um, if you just can't wait to hear, so we have a, a new visualization solution I'll be at least sharing with you. Some of you may have heard of it, but um, I think it's sort of been in stealth mode in terms of ARCHICAD users, and it's called Zuver, X-U-V-E-R. And uh, we'll be looking at it. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's the best solution in other words it's not like oh wow this is so much better than everything else but it's an interesting solution that has some unique features that i think are very useful for uh, archicad users to know about now we're going to start out with um i'm going to actually mute everybody else who's on here let's see mute here just to reduce some of the background noise um and uh all right so steve nickel want to say hello Hello, Eric. Hey, so Steve, Glad this is a, yeah, this is a project that uh, you created, um, and uh, tell us just a little bit about yourself and about this project, and then we'll look at visualization options within ARCHICAD and in BIMX. Uh, well, we're a small firm in uh, Estes Park, Colorado. Uh, Estes Park is actually the gateway to Rocky Mountain National Park. So it's and it's very historical. It started in 1880. So there's many. It's a there's a rich uh, use the word vocabulary of mountain homes, uh, historic and and new. And so we specialize in residential mountain homes for the most part. Okay. Uh, we Tell us are, a little bit about about this project that we're looking at right now. This project, it's got some interesting history also. The uh, name of the town is Estes Park. The client's last name is Estes, and he is a direct descendant of the founder of Estes Park. His name is Joel Estes. Anyway, um, Pete Estes is uh, just retired at the, around the age of 60 from Lockheed Martin in Los Angeles. So he's a rocket scientist, but has decided to come home. And when we first met about the project, his um, our assignment was I want to live in a library. So mm -hmm. the floor the floor plan is entirely organized around bookshelves. And All right. Library. He has like thousands of books that he wants to live in. So that's and you can see the steepness of the lot. It's so we needed to get go with three stories: entry at the lower level, main level. Living space is master suite and upper level is a balcony and some other things. Okay, so let me um, now just give a little tour uh, in terms of ARCHICAD's visualization. So uh, what I'm doing here, and it's a little bit crude um, because of the delays uh, as, as I'm, I have my computer doing a bunch of things all at once. Um, I'm maneuvering around in the 3D window using the orbit uh, command and so I'm very crudely moving in space now you may have noticed as I um, was backed out a little bit and I'll zoom out um, from this that we've got some uh, surroundings being visualized with picture maps so this is something 
uh, that um, I remember working with Steve to help him get set up. And you can see that there are um, essentially very thin walls placed some distance away with a picture map so that when you're down at the um, closer to eye level like this, you can see the um, uh, what looks like context. Um, now, if I switch from the uh, exterior view, the axonometric view um, here, and I switch this to a, a walking mode here, let's see, um, and then move forward with my mouse. So I'm now using um, the key keypad to move forward um, in this environment. And I can switch out of what's called fly mode, where I am sort of anywhere in space, to walking mode. So when I hit the letter F, I believe I um, should be able to drop down to, see, I'm just trying to maneuver here to the front. Um, and let's see, F, there we go. So now this should allow me to walk. <clears throat> so I'm using ArchiCAD's Explore mode, which and frankly, I haven't used very much. Um, it does allow you to uh, sort of move with arrow keys, um, and you can also use, um, you can use the mouse to change your uh, perspective view, and I believe you can, let's see if I, oh, okay, this is, you're right. So now I can also uh, use the center mouse button and just, pan either left, right, or up or down. And, and here we can see that we're getting into that library section. And I will move, um, see if I can move forward in space here. I think what's happening um, in some cases is that the maneuvering is bumping into obstacles. Uh, so it's preventing, so I'm trying to go forward. Let's see here. No, it's not this. Put this into 3D Explore mode, and all right, now it's moving forward. Okay, so um, this is, there are different ways that you can explore in ArcGIS, and you can place your um, camera in a specific location. You can save views uh, like this, and obviously what we're seeing here is a, a beautiful design with lots of texture that looks at least representative I mean, it doesn't look like a photograph, but it does uh, actually have some um, interesting visuals, you know, like the painting or, or the uh, photograph on the wall, etc. So within our ArchiCAD environment, um, if I, uh, of course, when you're working, you are able to switch between your working construction document views and your model views and do, I don't need to dwell on all of the options there, but what I want to say is within ArchiCAD, we can have multiple views we can jump to, and we can switch from sort of an exterior view to interior saved views or navigation. Now let's see what happens when we go to BIMX. So BIMX is, is uh, an option that GrappleSoft introduced quite a few years ago. I think it was originally called Virtual, Virtual Building Explorer. And it, uh, you can, it used to be that you'd save it as a, um, a BIMX file, but now you primarily will publish a BIMX hypermodel. A BIMX hypermodel will expect you to um, be in 3D and save out um, a series of uh, views from a publisher set. So without going into a training on that, um, the publisher set would be typically set up over in this right-hand uh, area uh, with multiple drawings as part of it. Now, Steve hasn't set that up in Publisher, so when we are open up um, the BIMX file, which uh, he had already exported and supplied to me, we'll see this is in BIMX. Now, this is um, the desktop version of BIMX. Um, and let me just check one thing here. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is the desktop version of BIMX, and we're you know in the same model from the outside uh, of the building. We can see some instructions here. If I hit the escape key, now I'm actually in the mode where I can maneuver around. Now, this is a more limited environment because I can't actually change the model. 
um, but it is something that you can send uh, a file to your client or a consultant and they can maneuver through it. Now, if I use the cursor keys here, um, so I'm actually just using the up arrow to move forward and I can also use um, left arrow to move sideways. Um, and you can see it's sort of bumping because it's bumping into some obstacles here. Now, if I hit F, I think I can fly forward. And so with the, when I'm in fly mode, it just allows me to float around, so to speak. But if I put it back to walking mode, then I'm actually going to be um, automatically placed in the environment. And you can see it's actually went up a couple of steps, I think. Um, and now I'm a little bit stuck here. So there are some issues with doing it in the walking mode where it's actually bumping into things um, and not letting me move through them. Uh, but if I put it into the fly mode, I can actually also just elevate. So there's a little um, keystroke here that allows me to elevate and move around. So if we're handing it to a client to say, uh, give them five minutes of instruction for the keys, and by the way, you hit escape, you'll see guidance here, including information on the controls. Uh, we have a view that's very, very similar to what we had within Archicad. And so this is uh, certainly a, a great way to just communicate with your client um, a, a pretty nice rendition of the model and they can explore it on their own. Now there are options that you can actually save uh, a gallery of uh, preset views. Um, and I don't think that Steve has this in this file, so we won't be able to see them here. But what I'm going to show you next is another project from another Steve, a different client named Steve Privil, uh, that does have a um, BIMX file with more of the features built in to it. Um, and we'll take a look at that momentarily. So let's see if Steve Privil if you are, I know you're on the line, and I did open up your audio. Uh, Steve, do you have a mic? All right, so I'm not hearing. Um, oh, let me just see. I, let me unmute Steve's line there. Steve Pribble, are you there? Yeah. You have a, Hi, Eric. I'm here. Good, good. All right, perfect. So, Steve, meet Steve. Uh, Hi, <laughs> yeah. Steve. And by oh. the way, Steve, Steve Nickel, um, do you have any? You can stay on the line and certainly add to things later, but any other comments or things from that you think would be of interest to people um, before we move forward? Oh, I'm trying to think here. I can address a couple issues on Bimex. Mm -hmm. uh, when you use Bimex, then those backdrops fly around outside. They become immediately apparent and look strange. But... Mm -hmm. That's not a big deal. The other thing I would emphasize is that I do a lot of tinkering with the textures, particularly with colors, um, light, dark, um, and grains in the woods. And BIMX does not always pick those up. For example, look at those chairs with uh, the wicker chairs. That fabric, the fabric that I create is not gray. It's similar to the color of the arm of the arms and mm -hmm. so bimex does not pick up things like that particularly well and i would also say that i don't have the trouble in the herky jerkiness that you're seeming to have today i'm not sure why but it 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 works pretty smoothly and i've sent it to all of our clients well the last five let's say and there, and I sent along a set of instructions, eight and a half by 11 PDF, and they seem to not have much trouble and they love it to, to walk around into the house. And that's the power of Archicad, to let people know what their house is gonna look like before mm -hmm. it exists. Right, well, that's um, great to, hear your experience with it and I know that uh, that's one of the things Graphisoft is very uh, pleased to be able to provide users is the ability to communicate not only in your office bringing up something on screen with your client but to send them a file through BIMX. Now we're going to take it to the next level with Steve. Just one more one quick more comment uh, 
Eric, this client, the rocket science, when he scientist, when he still lived in LA, he had his buddies over for uh, to look at this BIMX. And of course, there are no slouches in terms of technology, and they were amazed. So mm -hmm. I, I was I was kind of flabbergasted that it passed that test anyway. <laughs> Great. Well, it's a beautiful design just in terms of uh, the way everything lays out and, and feels so spacious and yet, you know, obviously so rich with uh, uh, the materials of the library. By the way, how did you do the um, uh, library books? Did you create uh, a set and then turn it into an object or uh, is this from a library part that exists? There, that's right out of the box in Archicad. Uh, but I, subsequent to this, I found an even better one, I think, from either SketchUp Warehouse or Vim Components, it, it they were richer, like the covers have little writing on it and things like that. But mm -hmm. no, I, just, I just used the one right out of the box and stacked them up and then an the elevation, just, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, et cetera. Right. Take, it's not that complicated. Right, right, good. Well, thanks for uh, sending this in. I know uh, I'd seen it before because I had helped you with a couple of the uh, things like the environmental mapping, uh, you know, which is sort of a, a quick and quick and dirty, you could call it, uh, method to just make it look like you're surrounded by the context, the mountains, you know, or the sea or whatever it is. It, it, it works particularly well for distant elements. Um, and uh, less well for, you know, a real context like an urban uh, context. All right, so let, let me move on then to Steve Pribble. And um, so Steve Pribble, so Steve Nickel, you're in uh, Colorado. Steve Pribble, you're in the LA area. Uh, we're going to go over to your project in Archicad here. Um, so Steve, tell us, so, by the way, do you have a, a webcam? I, and I didn't ask Steve Nickel, but uh, do you have a webcam, Steve Pribble? Oh, uh, sure. I mean, Let me take my piece of tape off. And Steve Nickel, if you if you wanted to come on for a moment, if you have a webcam, then that's not sure if I do. <laughs> okay, all right. So Steve Pribble, there we go, Steve. All right, I haven't seen you for a while. You look just like I remember you. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad it's me. Yeah. Uh, this little project is uh, about an 800 square foot addition to a single story house in Culver City. Culver City is just an adjacent city into uh, Los Angeles uh, and the owners wanted it to keep some of the aspects of what was there which is sort of this Mexican look and then also um, they kind of like Tuscan or Hacienda look so that's that's kind of the style we were going for so there's a small addition to the back of the house there's a new garage with an ADU accessory dwelling unit on top of it that's attached to the house and then a second floor addition as well and a kind of a large patio out the back okay so um so i'm flying around using the orbit method in archicad uh now you do have a bunch of interior views so i'm going to go to uh, you know some interior save views here so these are great because they do um uh, what do you call it? They do take you directly in. Now, this is the textures that you know I was mentioning to you, Steve, that I didn't have, and I did load the library that you referred to. It didn't change. Um, okay. Now, uh, in order to avoid uh, seeing them as we move around, I'm going to switch my uh, created a layer combination where I turned off the layer just for those paintings, so it will re remove that distraction there. Um, okay. <clears throat> Now, obviously, in your office, you don't have that problem. You have, you know, nice images there, but I didn't have access to them. Now, I am seeing some rather odd um, polygons. You know, this is a human figure. It looks pretty natural, but this looks, you know, rather odd, the, the colors. And that has to do with the pen set. So you're using a pen set that maybe is uh, used generally in the project. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to switch this to your one that says all black for layout. And while it does make certain things like duller, um, on the other hand, it, it's just a little less distracting as far as um, I'm concerned. So this is an option that people should know about the pen sets. Uh, you can have as many of these as you like for different purposes. 
and like for example in an electrical plan you might make a lot of your um, walls and other things gray while highlighting you know electrical elements in a black pen or a red pen or things like that whereas uh, the general one may have a whole different uh, look and I just switched to the one that was all black and so it made a bunch of the um, what do you call it a bunch of the line work become black um, We'll just take a look at a, a couple of other things, a great room cutaway here. Um, and again, each time, because this is saving the view settings, if I wanted to, I could update the views um, or I can just manually go and say, let's take off the paintings that, that disappears, makes those disappear and possibly switch the pen set to the black to make it um, just uh, feel a little different. Um, now, uh, again, we're, a beautiful design we're seeing you know a lot of spatial uh rep let's say tricky spatial components of you know the great room hard for a client to visualize with without being able to sort of move around and say ah okay now i get it um so i'm assuming see if you have found that useful for your design process to be able to um, just give people a sense of it yeah when i when i present presented to these clients, I actually had the model up on a big monitor. We had Vimex on an iPad and uh, used a combination of the things because none of, the, none of them really give them the impression of being in the room. So actually, I would show them a lot of renderings too, which were trying to get more accurate color representation, whereas the BIMX and walking through the model is more just sort of a spatial, you know, mm -hmm. spatial aspect. But the thing that I was, you know, that I, I find really difficult to deal with is the landscaping. And that's why I was talking to you, Eric. I was looking for alternatives for uh, better ways for landscaping. Because right. it, it seems really crude and sort of scary. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so I want to point out that the BIMX that we explored briefly with Steve uh, Pribbles, I'm sorry, with Steve Nichols uh, one, there are other options here. So there's an option for saving out um, a BIMX file with drawings, with, uh, you know, floor plans, sections, elevations, and it can be as many drawings as you want, three or four sheets. It could be, um, it, it could be dozens of sheets, depending on what purpose. For the client, you want something simple. If you were sending it to a consultant, you might want something more uh, extensive. Now, in addition to being able to play it on a mobile device, and I will be um, actually doing it uh, with my iPad, and you'll see it on the broadcast screen in a moment, Graphisoft recently, maybe about a year ago, um, as far as I recall, introduced an option to view it in a web browser. So I'm going to click on play here. So this is on Graphisoft's BIMX site, and they provide some free space within the um, uh, you know, for every ARCAD user, and then you can pay if you want a little more space. But I, I think this probably is plenty of space for most people free. If I go to architectural sheets, and we go here to first and second floor construction plans, double click on it, it's going to open it up. Now I'm going to go and uh, just simply make it full screen. Um, whoops. Uh, let's see, if I make it full screen this way, it'll it'll be better here or full browser, I guess, is it's opening it up, but it, it will take a moment. Um, so here we can see, you know, normal set of working drawings, and I can zoom in on this, and it's nice and crisp. Um, you know, as you zoom in, it'll, it'll clean up um, after a few seconds, and it'll be, um, you know, just as crisp as, as you want. Um, taking a little longer to to clean up, there it is. Now it's it's uh, it's crisp. So you can um, go in uh, here and look at this. You can also go to the navigation menu up here and go to another. You know, let's say here's a furniture plan, um, and we can um, also go to the 3D. So if I go to the 3D, uh, let's see. Um, so where? How do you do the 3D? I forgot. Um, well, there's renderings or are your sheets with uh, there, but uh, views. You can go to the views folder. Views. Okay, front from driveway. All right. So here's this. All right. So now this is going into the 3D model, and of course, um, um, not of course. This is this allows me to navigate. So 
this is in a web browser. So this is important to know. You can send your client a link to this. In fact, Steve sent me the link to this particular file on the Graphisoft BIMX site. You can also embed this onto your own website. So you can say, you know, I'd like to have, whether it's just in a private area for that client, because you're just working with that client in process, or a public area where you're saying, hey, check out some of our portfolio, you can embed that file, um, uh, navigation file, actually this entire thing here. So now if I uh, um, use the cursor keys, now it's interesting, if I go here, yeah, so I can move, I'm using the um, a key on the keyboard, W for walk forward, um, A would mean going to the left, D to the right, and S takes me back. So these are four keys that are in the shape of a um, the cursor key, and I can also move my mouse to turn around. So we can go here, and it does have, I believe, um, if I turn, I think it's going to bump me up the stairs. No, we're not, we must be in fly mode. We go to F. How do we get out of fly mode here? I thought um, that there was part of navigation. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to walk through the door here. Let's see. You can. I, can I know door. you can double. Yeah. There you go. So now I'm in. Um, I'm in the room, and so we can navigate around. And so I'm using the cursor keys, and and I can also combine it with the mouse. So with the mouse, I can slowly turn, and then I can move forward. I think. Um, yeah, so then I can move through this space um, here. So uh, do you have any, you have different renderings, this views here, so we can have save views. So if I go to rear patio, um, it's going to jump to that view. Yeah, now I saved out multiple views uh, because it was easier to start from different positions around the model, but each one of those is like 80 or 90 megabytes, so it greatly increases the file size. Yeah, so you're using an option where you're saving out multiple 3D views from in the publisher, which right. is natural. One of the side effects of that is that it's dumping out the model multiple times, each one with the same geometry, but with a different viewpoint. Now, there is a separate option for saving um, locations in BIMX, and I can't remember exactly where, it, where it's located in terms of the interface, um, but you can definitely save out some preset views within the same model. Now, the power of what you've done here, you're not using it, but the power is that you could have multiple versions of the model, a before and after, or a full architectural and a structural, or an architectural without furnishings and one with furnishings. So you can have different versions of the model. Each one will have a starting viewpoint, and then you can move through it. Um, but uh, so one thing, I just can't remember exactly where the gallery functionality is set, um, but you, you'd want to look at that, Steve, because then your file will be, you know, it'll only have one model, but you'll be saving multiple views. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Good. Yeah, I'll take a look. Yeah. All right. All right. So we can see that it, the, the rendering looks similar to what we had in the ArchiCAD OpenGL window. Um, now, I haven't uh, done anything with ArchiCAD renderings today, and I'm not going to at this point. Um, but I will be. We will be looking at some other visualization, including uh, Mark Benner, who'll be coming up next, has done things with Twin Motion, and we're going to be seeing some, you know, lovely landscaping. And so, Steve, you'll find that particularly useful. Now, what I'm going to do is jump over to uh, my iPad um, here, and. Let's see, um, so we should have the iPad. Let's see, this is in, I will get this back to, there's that, and reflector. Why is that not coming up? Um, reflector here, window bring all to front. Hmm, I just had that. Uh, let's see, I've got this. Screen mirroring to there. There it is. Okay. All right. So this is my iPad. So you can see if you're seeing my webcam, that I've got this on here right now. Um, and I'm going to switch over to um, BIMX. So I've just switched it over here. So what I'm doing, what you're seeing on, on the broadcast screen, and Steve, can you confirm that you're seeing you know, the BIMX uh, 
the yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to go and open up the same project in uh, Weber here. So you can collect projects or you can put projects onto a mobile device, whether it's your own iPad that you bring to a meeting, or you can send it for your client to review on an iPad, Android tablet, or iPhone or, or Android phone, and it will have more functionality. So for example, I can go to, um, let's say the construction plans here and tap to view it. So we can see this and I can use my fingers to zoom in on it. And then if I tap one of these markers, so the section markers, I can say open it. And so it's actually gonna open up the sheet where that section is and you know, I can move around. Now what's even cooler between this is that if I um, do this and i not really good, let's go to this one and I can say show in 3D. And that, by the way, that's Steve's logo there. So we are now looking at a version of the plan brought up into 3D, of course. We're seeing the walls at sort of half height there. And I can rotate, I can zoom in and, and rotate this around. Uh, and how we, oh yeah, I can just grab it with one finger and rotate that around. Um, so that's really cool. I can go back to, I can use any of these markers here and say show in 3D. This is gonna be a section cut through the building. And you can see it's showing the drawing here. And then I can say, show me with the section cut. Uh, let's see, how do we do? I can't remember how. Can rotate around there too. Oh, cut here. So we can say cut here. And now we're looking at that section um, here. Now, I think I may be reversed. And frankly, I just don't use this often enough to be giving the best demonstration. But the fact that we can go um, here and it just sort of zooms it around. You can, you, it's probably moving too fast for go to webinar to, to pick up, but it literally can flip things around. So you can say, let me look at this section here. Let's see, um, I thought we could go on any particular drawing. Mm, apparently not uh, here, but Actually, I know- it's pretty, it's pretty smooth on screen. Okay, well, that's great that it's uh, doing that. Uh, let's go back to um, our furniture plan here, bring this up, and I think I can say that I want to show this in 3D, and you can see now we actually are seeing the furniture plan. So this is just very, very cool, um, using the mobile devices, uh, you know, the, the visualization quality is decent, um, you know, in terms of just the textures are coming across. Um, and of course, we do have your pictures on the walls, you know, not not those checkerboard um, patterns uh, there. Um, so very, very powerful. Now, if I go back to, um, let's see, if I go to, if I go to 3D and just, uh, these are views here. Um, I want to go to just the 3D view. Whoops, um, no. Uh, it's where it's used. I want to just get back to the 3D and uh, put it into the walk mode. So if I if I go, here's the walk mode, the bottom right corner, you can see a little human figure, I tap on that. And now, you know, I can um, move around and then I believe I should be able to walk with this. Now, this is something for some reason, my keypad is not connecting to this so I, the walk mode is not working. I can use my fingers to sort of expand things and it actually is moving me in space um, through this. So that's reasonably good. I'm, I've gotten pretty comfortable with just using the fingers to bring me forward in space. Um, so this can be shared with the client. This you can have on your um, mobile device when you wanna meet uh, with someone. Um, so I think Graphisoft's done a fantastic job of creating this in the desktop version, which is what I showed with Steve's, the browser version, which, uh, which I showed with Steve Nichols, the browser version where it's on their transfer site or your own website or in the mobile app, which is what we're looking at now. So I'm going to move on to Mark Benner. Um, now, uh, Steve, do you have any, any other comments in terms of how your experience is? Have you found a people enjoy being able to explore it? 
Yeah, and it's actually really good too because once they've downloaded it, you can update it to you know whatever you've done that day or that week, and then just update the file and just tell them, hey, take a look at the update, and you don't have to you know. I mean, it's a nice way to transfer information. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing I'll point out is that um, if I tap on an element, there's a little dot that'll come up, and then um, I can uh, let's see, let's go to or select. Uh, so I know there's some things with info. Um, let's see if I go, here is the uh, sliding door. I can, let's see, tap on it. Okay, we don't seem to have any info um, on these things right now. I'm not sure why, maybe you didn't export any info, but in theory, or not in theory, I've seen it, you can have, um, allow people to select things and pull up information, whether it's the size, um, whether it's a manufacturer, or you know, complete building specification like you would have um, in a specifications report or document um, in your working drawings. So that is available in BIMx um, to communicate data as well. And there are some measure tools where you can say, you know, how much clear space is here, or how tall is that door, um, which I'm not, uh, I'm not going to demonstrate, but they are available. So Steve, any other final comments before we move on? No, nope, that's it. All right, well, thanks for sharing all of that. So sure. let, me, let me go and uh, bring up Mark Benner. Um, so Mark, your line is open. Are you there? Hello from Chicago. All right, so I'm gonna make you presenter. All right. And we're gonna see your screen. And so um, let's see, it's about 20 to two here. So I'd like to just try to, uh, you could go on for a long time because you have some really amazing stuff to, to share um, but I'm going to ask you to try to keep it to about 15 or 20 minutes um, and then that'll put us at the top of the hour for um, our special guest from Zoover and I apologize I told them it'd be half an hour and obviously we're, we're taking a little longer for everything but I think in the for the sake of just giving the most well-rounded presentation I think it's well worth it and please if you have questions um to uh please type them in if you have comments like wow you know that was interesting uh do type them into the chat and i will check them out i see um mark elster says the herky jerky is due to bandwidth prior priority given to go to webinar yes that was a while ago yeah i've got a lot of stuff going and go to webinar is trying to take priority and then um uh, Mark says, use different camera paths to do that. So I think that's probably in relationship to the um, uh, saving out a um, multiple views. So that's probably the clue uh, for you, Steve Pribble, that you create a camera path and that camera path is going to be uh, included somehow in the BIMX. So, um, all right, so let's go on to Mark um, and uh, let me just bring back there we go okay I'm trying to get it so that I can see things properly here so Mark I'm seeing your screen uh, I'm not seeing your webcam uh, at the moment do you have a webcam on I do I don't know if it's turned on how do I where's that you go to front there uh, it may be that it's just hidden on my uh, there we go okay no I'm all not seeing you I'm seeing myself uh, so if you click on the uh, webcam icon in the about now. All right. So Mark. It's me. Uh, welcome. So you're in Chicago, and uh, I've known Mark for well, actually I've known all of these uh, people we've been talking to for a while, uh, but Mark, I probably go back um, one of the longer people uh, just in terms of uh, working with Archicad, and you know, I think you were even a reseller at one point back in back in the day. Back in the day, yeah, I was uh, partnered with uh, with another reseller. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah and just I was really impressed with Steve and Steve's work. Um, Steve Nichols and Steve Pribble. I've actually worked with Steve Pribble in the past, and I, I'm really impressed with their uh, with with their visualization within Archicad. Uh, I use Archicad more for modeling. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, you know um, presentation that goes on here, but I'm I'm more interested in getting into other uh, other applications to make that happen. Um, so this is a project uh, in Bridgewater, New Jersey. Um, 
I'm trying to, I had this issue yesterday. I, I was going to talk about uh, my navigation tools and it's a uh, 3D mouse by 3D connections. I think there's a, I think it's a conflict with, uh, uh, with go to meeting that it doesn't doesn't like uh, the inputs from that. So, um, but no matter, we've got um, the traditional orbit tools. Uh, and so this is a house, uh, as I said, in, in Bridgewater, New Jersey, and we've gone uh, to show uh, a lot of the context, many of the surrounding homes, just kind of blocked out for perspective. Uh, and then I, I use a very simplified uh, tree. Uh, to to position the uh, tree survey so I know where each tree is located um, uh, in position for for Archicad mm -hmm. um, and then this one is also in in kind of an early design phase so I haven't uh, spent a lot of attention on the inside but we can, can go in and have a look So I really haven't paid much attention to textures and things like that, but we've we've outfitted it with some furnishings and it's really a kind of a generic uh, palette at this moment. Uh, but it's it's what we use for the schematic design presentation and uh, it really lets the client start to get a, a sneak peek of what they're what they're looking at. Uh, made extensive use of the railing tool. Uh, we have these custom balusters and and uh, limestone rails. I of course, have the infinity pool, <laughs> a little bit of a grotto. Uh, so this gets us most of our geometry. Um, and then, do you think it's uh, you, you think we ought to jump into twin motion at this point? Uh, I would go to BIMX first. Okay. So very similar to what we were looking at um, on the other, I think, well, both we saw both of them in BIMX. This is, uh, this is a version of, of that same, of this project in BIMX. So one of the main points uh, in terms of visualization here is that BIMX looks very similar to the Archicad 3D window, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, but it is accessible to clients, so that's its biggest strength is that you or consultants um, and uh, the ability to have it in the web browser, like you're using the actual web interface as well, um, mm -hmm. means that it's e easier to distribute the file. Um, Although the mobile version that I was demonstrating just gives more more functionality at this it point. It does. We, we presented this. Uh, I had another client here in Chicago, uh, and um, we demonstrated the BIMX, on a, um, the, the BIMX model on an iPad, and the builder was so impressed that he went out and bought an iPad and installed it on a lockbox on the job site uh, so that they could always have access to the model whenever questions came up. Right, excellent, excellent. By the way, I, I see a comment from um, uh, a little while ago from Roger Schaefer. I have a client that collect, connected his iPhone to his 65-inch TV and shows everyone that comes over his new edition walkthrough. So thank you, Roger, for sharing that. From the iPhone, yeah, I mean, the iPhone is powerful in terms of uh, being able to maneuver through, you know, models of fairly reasonable. Right. Segment. All right, so... We've seen that. Now let's take a look at Twin Motion because that's really something where you've taken it further, and and you will want to spend just a little time talking about how you have done it in terms of placing in re replacement objects to make nicer trees, and sure. you know, a few of the other things that Twin Motion does allow. So this is the same project, but look at the landscaping here. Yeah, this is the project, and, and Twin Motion um, puts in a lot of uh, a lot of detail. You have a vast library of trees uh, and, and flowers and grasses and people um, and sounds. Uh, I don't know if the, the sound effects are coming through, but you can you can populate this with uh, bird sounds and water and crowds. 
Uh, and it just adds a whole another another layer of of atmosphere to the to the image. Um, it's very fluid. So you're able to navigate pretty quickly. Uh, and then we were talking. Here's our our corn garden. <laughs> Surprisingly, they have very few uh, vegetables to offer in their in their uh, their palate, but uh, corn is one of the better ones. Uh, so we also have this water feature with the koi, and the koi are, are an important important design feature for this house. They uh, they uh, bought a house, uh, bought a property that had a house on it, and it had a koi pond, and they've torn the house down, but they've saved the koi. Uh, so we needed a spot to uh, to house the koi in the new house. All right. So I'll point out that we've got some animation going here. So as we're even sitting still, we're seeing the water move. And you may have noticed that the trees were moving. That's an option that you can turn on or off um, in the environment. So why don't you show, just before you show us how you plant trees and landscape, is just the environmental options, like you showed me some seasons and sure. you know, times of day and things like that. Sure. So, um, you know, every every project has its um, has its season, um, and in in, in in Twin Motion they call that the weather. So um, we have uh, kind of a, a a condition, a daily condition of of bright sunshine. Uh, you can then bring in the clouds. We'll get overcast. Uh, then it'll start to have some precipitation. And then you work your way back through, clouds start to clear up, and you're back to a sunny day. Um, you also have a season option. So you can we can start here in uh, summer, and then we work our way through slowly. We'll go to fall. You can kind of start to see the leaves change on the trees. Things get a little more dull. And as we get into winter, we start to get some snow on the ground. We can actually start uh, to have a little snowfall happen there. <laughs> and then ultimately the trees are shed, uh, the leaves are shed from the trees deep in winter. And then you complete the seasons. We end, end up back in spring and we make a nice sunny day. All right, that's that's awesome. That that is just a lot of fun, and uh, you know, it's remarkably realistic. I would say, you know, obviously not perfectly realistic, but remarkable. So. Right. So then we have some other elements that help to tell the story. Uh, this is this is out in uh, in a residential neighborhood, but so we've got a street and some light traffic. Um. And it just helps people understand what what uh, what to expect. But we can we can uh, also make arrangements for that. If this were more of a, a busy street, we can increase the density and have many more cars. Uh, they might want to find another another uh, lot if we have this much traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and that's this is what they call paths. So it's kind of an auto, an automatically created um, lane of of traffic. Um, so you just basically click a series of points to say you want traffic to go along this um, area. Uh, yeah. In this case, you've already got something that represents the road in the model, but it's really a separate virtual path, and the cars disappear when they get to the end, right? Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, and then we can do the same thing with uh, with people. Uh, yeah. So we might have a walking path next to that road. Here we go. So, oh, and while you're doing that, I'll point out uh, this is all with the standard twin motion that is available to ArchiCAD users, no charge. So, Graphisoft has arranged with the developer of Twin Motion to provide this, and I think it's, they have a one-year technology license where, at least for the next year, if you're an ArchiCAD user on 22 and 23, then you can use all of the functionality that Mark is showing. You know, at no charge. Now, I don't know what's going to happen a year from now. Whether they're going to say, you know, you only get a little bit without paying, and then you get more if you pay. I don't know. But 
Yeah, my understanding is uh, they're they're developing. This is Epic Epic Games is the author now of of Twin Motion, and they also make the Unreal Engine. Uh, and I think they're they're trying out the technology, and they're going to launch. I think it's going to convert into Unreal Engine uh, in the future, and it'll be a, a package that you can apply that way. So this is a walking path. Uh, we have some um, some parameters that we can set. We can we can pick the uh, origin of the people. Um, we can define the kind of uh, activity that's happening. So these are these are street dressed, but you might also have them dressed as if they're in the office or if they're traveling. So I don't think the path is really what people would want. But you have you can put a cluster of people. You can put drop some people in the scene. Yeah, and you can make it wider and get a group of people. Um, you can increase the density, make a real pack of people. So it's just very, very quick, very easy. Um, um, all right, so t show us just a little bit of how you put in the trees and the choice of landscaping. How would you put in a new tree, and how would you know where all those original um, funky trees were? Sure. So that's that's one of the challenges um, with with Twin Motion is it's it's difficult to to bring in and, and register you know, the tree survey. So that's why I use ARCHICAD to place uh, kind of a placeholder tree. Uh, let's see if we can find one of those. Yeah, so for instance, here's a small tree that came from ARCHICAD and twin motion translates the ARCHICAD tree into a twin motion tree. Um, and then you'll, you can see that in this list. And here we have a folder that came from ARCHICAD and then highlighted is that tree. So I can actually toggle that off once I'm done with it. Uh, but I use that just to position uh, a, 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 another tree. And, and one of the other things that, that happens when Twin Motion translates the ARCHICAD trees, they're all the same. So it, it's it's a little bit um, artificial. And I like to be able to, to pick and choose and adjust the the uh, scale of each tree. So I just use that to, to position where, where I want to place a tree. Uh, how, do you, how do you place a tree and, and just show us a, a little bit of the library of choices? Sure. So this is the tree mode. Um, these are the trees. We've got quite a selection. Uh, these are, you know, both uh, coniferous and deciduous. Some cactus, uh, some pines. So here's a nice symmetrical pine. And you can see it's it's very realistic in, in as to where you're going to place it. And just clicking places the tree, and then it loads it, and it randomizes. You can see this tree is a little bigger than the other one, so it randomizes the size. It's the same species, uh, but it helps to to reinforce the realism by just randomizing. Uh, the other thing that we can do uh, these are these trees are all placed um, in in the position of actual trees. Um, and we oftentimes want to have a little more background. So the, the adjacent properties are pretty sparse. Um, we might want to fill that in rapidly. Um, and to do that, we, we have this paintbrush mode and you can put in a whole forest really very quickly. Uh, it just randomizes from the selection. You can take any of these trees from the palette and put it in the paint box uh, and then you'll be able to you know, paint those in, and it randomizes the size and the and the, and the species. Yeah, that's that's really incredible. So you have a background image there that's from across the, the what looks like across the water, but I think it's actually just um, uh, that's where your model ends, and so the gray is empty space. Yeah. yeah, there's a there's a base which in this case is brick. It ha it kind of grays out to a to a lake look, uh, and then there is a background that we're looking at. Um, and that's what they call context. And we have a choice of about uh, well, exactly um, seven options that you just pick and it, it swaps those out. And then you can rotate. So you're looking at the one that's most uh, appropriate for you. Uh, you can put it in the mountains or on a desert, on the waterfront. Right, okay, cool. Um, so just to sum up, you export out of ARCHICAD, uh, well, not to sum up because you didn't describe it. So when you're in the 3D window, 
you go to the save as command and after you've installed the twin motion um, tools uh, there'll be a save as twin motion um, or export or synchronize what is it called yeah when you when you install twin motion it adds uh there's an add-on that, that happens in archicad and it creates this menu called twin motion uh and it, the, the the operation is very simple you bring up your 3d window with the elements that you want to see in twin motion and then you select synchronize and it it translates and it opens up it launches uh launches twin motion for you uh, and brings up your model and then it's a it's a um it is a true synchronization in that if you if i were to make changes to the materials or add elements or remove elements edit in any way i just resynchronize and it, it does a delta only a changes only uh, synchronization with twin motion uh, so it's it's unidirectional the things that i do in twin motion don't come back uh, but mm -hmm. i also don't um i don't really modify the model in twin motion uh, that's all driven from uh, from archicad uh, and it does bring in textures so the textures that originate from archicad do show up in twin motion uh, but then we also have uh, an additional palette of um, of materials that we can that we can choose from on the twin motion side. Uh, so I usually swap out. This, uh, I think in this case I, I swapped everything out. Um, but you know when you click on any element uh, and it does things by materials. So it, the the entire roof cedar shake is is selected. Um, and then you switch over to our library of materials. We have roof coverings, and we have a number of options, uh, maybe a, a fish scale. And you just drag it onto the element, and it changes it. Um, and then you can also adjust scale. Right. That's, uh, that's fantastic. So, <clears throat> all right, so you install it, then you, when you have your model open, you synchronize, it then creates the initial version. You can uh, save, tweak the materials or the surfaces, and you can add other entourage elements like landscaping. And then when you resynchronize, it, it will just take the geometry changes, and so you'll have a somewhat different design of the building. But uh, the other other things that you've added in Twin Motion will still be there. Right. Okay. Great. Um, so I do see some comments and questions, so let's do that, and then we will need to go on. Uh, sure. I'm going to keep uh, my special guest from Zuber. It's in uh, Holland, and it's 11 at night there, so I, I we want to make sure we don't take too much more time. So um, Mark Elster said we require our contractors to provide on-site iPads in our specifications. So that's just in general using, well, anything, but BIMX certainly is a, a very great convenient thing to have uh, on the iPad. All right, uh, Ian says, is Twinmotion an add-on to Archicad or a separate program? So it it is both. It installs an add-on so that you can export and synchronize, and then it's a separate app that it's installed when you go to the Twinmotion. I'm not going to show you all the things, but you basically you're going to go to a website. Uh, is it a separate website or is it part of the Graphisoft um, downloads? Uh, it's a separate website. Okay, so you can Google that, um, you know, for Twin Motion for Archicad or something like that, and find the installer. Um, now, Kevin McKee says Twin Motion has been very unstable for me. I have a large 650 meg file, and it seems to crash a lot. Okay, uh, how big is your file, Mark? Uh, that's a good question. I really don't have any idea, but I could look it up here. It's it's a it's a processor heavy application. Um, and, and really you need a good, um, a very good video card. Uh, this, well, I, was, I thought this was much larger. It's a 270 meg file, so okay. it's not terribly large. Now, I, I will just caution judging a file complexity by the size and megabytes on disk is not actually a, a good measure because you can have things that are very small in terms of the computer description, but are actually much more complicated in terms of polygons. Um, and polygons are what usually are the factor that causes uh, rendering and maneuvering through 3D to bog down. So in any event, Kevin's saying on his computer, it's been crashing a lot. Okay, uh, Mark 
Goao says, I have tried importing my model into twin motion and it floats about 100 meter off the ground. So, um, so I guess, is there a, any quick trick for just getting things set, either the model set at zero or the, the view set at zero? Yeah, so the, um, uh, the entire ARCHICAD model is, is one piece. So you, can, you can raise and lower the entire model. Also, the, the ground plane that comes from twin motion is a is a plane, um, and and this is their modification tool. So you can raise the entire ground plane up to meet your model. Mm, okay, so that means if you made a mistake in your ARCHICAD setup, you can fix it here. But the other thing I'll point out is, in general, you. I'm guessing you probably want to set your project zero as something related to the building, like the top of the ground floor, um, a floor plane, a floor, uh, you know, structural floor or similar, and set your sea level or other height datum in their project location saying, oh, sea level is a certain distance down below that. You don't want to say project zero is sea level and my project is up at a thousand feet or a thousand meters. Um, because then you will be floating way off of the project zero. So generally set your project zero to be something related to the building and your reference level of sea level or the Australian height datum, et cetera, to, you know, some appropriate negative value below that. Right. Um, all right. So in Marx is how do I adjust this in twin motion or ARCAD? So I just, we just went over two different things. You can literally change it in twin motion and you can also um, do it there. Now, one of the things I point out, twin motions documentation, it's very limited. Um, I, I haven't spent much time on it at all, but I, I tried to go through some of their materials and it was it was hard even for me to make head or tail of, of things. So Mark Benner, you're you know you're definitely way ahead of most everybody. Um, all right, so Malcolm says combating Lumion perhaps. How would you compare this to Lumion, Mark? Do you know I'm anything? A Mac, mine's a Mac office, so Lumion wasn't an option for me. Um, so twin motion really was the preferred solution for that reason. Okay. Uh, and is Lumion something you have to pay for as well? Yes, it is. Yeah, so that'll be another consideration. Um, Wendy Hochstetter says, Eric, would you have a few minutes after the webinar to answer a few questions? Okay, all right. So maybe, Wendy, I, I have a whole, I'm running off to a dental appointment. So send me an email to support at bobro.com and I will at least respond with whatever I can. Don Schleining, hey Don, did Mark use the Unreal Engine, have attempted to download the software without success? Uh, I, I've not uh, downloaded the real Unreal Engine and, and made it work yet. Uh, I, I, I purchased uh, Twin Motion, so I'm, I've been focusing my efforts on using Twin Motion and just kind of monitoring things as they're developing with, uh, with Unreal Engine. Okay, so uh, Twin Motion used to be a purchase, and now at least for a while, it's a free resource for ARCAD users. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, Todd Hoshka says I placed a couple of small columns in ARCAD, then I place a Twin Motion tree over that. So that would be a way to do it. Apparently, you can um, turn off the ARCAD placeholder elements, um, you know, in using that tree hierarchical tree listing of elements. Um, so, you, Todd, you may want to consider that, but if you have the tree covering up the column, then that, that works fine. Mm -hmm. um, David Norman, a uh, couple of questions. How do you place picture maps onto curved walls in a model at a correct scale? And you can provide some info on the learning curve for twin motion renderings. Um, so, very, very quick answers because we have to move on. What, uh, Mark? Yeah, learning curve is mostly just, um, you know, understanding how to make the translation from ARCHICAD into twin motion. Uh, it's fairly straightforward learning how to place trees and select trees. If you've done that in ARCHICAD, you'll know how to do that in twin motion. Uh, then the, the creation of the, of, the, um, of the output. So you can create videos. Um, that, that takes a little getting used to. Um, but I, I think, um, you know, once, once you've crossed the bridge and gotten from ARCHICAD into twin motion, it, it's a fairly, fairly shallow learning curve. Okay, so John Ryder says, how is the final model presented to the client? Is there an online viewer like BIMX? Uh, there is an online viewer just like BIMX. Um, 
or what I typically do is output it as a as an animation a, a, a movie file. Uh, it's a super fast rendering engine. It used to take days to to render uh, animations from ARCHICAD. Uh, 30 second, 90 second animations out of out of uh, twin motion takes maybe 10 minutes. Awesome. So, um, so you'll save out a, a video file is one option, and then you'll also there is an online viewer, so you could export this to be viewed online in in a website. Uh, yeah, precisely. They they refer to it as uh, BIM Motion, and this is just what your client would see. This is BIM Motion, uh, and it gives them all of the navigation options they can also uh, adjust um, model conditions so they can change the month they can add the wind they can put in you know change all those atmospheric things that we're looking at um, you know they can do that in this in this viewer okay um, so a few thank yous and uh, things but Al Campbell makes an interesting point I realize the focus of the webinar is project presentation but I cannot ignore the absence of ridge caps in the model please explain <laughs> I put them there and ultimately I just this is still an early design okay so uh, just hasn't gotten there yet all right um, Todd Hotchkiss says lots of videos on YouTube so uh, I assume you mean Todd that there are lots of training videos or demonstrations of people's projects I don't quite know which one you mean um, yes I guess you mean training videos okay so there, there are yeah there's a lot of like there's twin motion fan videos uh, people that are that are experts at, uh, at twin motion and its application I've not seen a lot. There's there's demo videos from Twin Motion themselves. Uh, the actual instruction happens uh, is uh, like a fan a fan site. All right. Well, Mark, thank you so much for sharing um, your project, sharing your insights, and uh, you know want to move on. So uh, you know, we'll my we'll pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for, for joining us. All right, so I'm going to invite to the stage, so to speak, um, Lawrence uh, Koch and Mark Venner, I mean, sorry, and Patrick uh, Van Zwol from Zuber. So let me just open, uh, let's see, uh, you're both available for microphone. Let me unmute Patrick there. You can go put on your webcams. I'm going to make uh, Lawrence, I think, is going to be the presenter. So I'll make it so that he can show his screen. Let's see. Have to do this here, and so Mark, you can turn off your webcam. And there is Patrick, and it's late at night, and you're still still up and been waiting for your chance to to get in front of everybody. So welcome, um, Lawrence. Uh, you want to put on your webcam when you get a chance? So Patrick, uh, we're not hearing you, Patrick. So Lawrence, hey. Hi, hi, hi. All right, and Patrick, can you go ahead and talk? We're not hearing you, Pat, um, Patrick. I have unmuted your line, so you may have to choose <coughs> audio. Try talking, Patrick. Okay, not getting your audio. Pat, uh, Lawrence, are you hearing him? Uh, no, I'm not hearing anything. Um, so Patrick, there is a uh, an option. I know we've had audio from you before, but not today. Uh, so in, if you switch, go to meeting or go to webinar to the frontmost window, there would be an audio option, and you might have to choose which microphone is active, because it is possible it's using line input or something. Still not hearing you. Now, this is uh, a little frustrating. So, um, Patrick, if necessary, you may you may need to try again. No, you could try the phone option and uh, you know just call in on your cell phone or something. Um, it would have a number. I'm not sure what what number you'd have to call, but it will list a number for you. You might have to call out of the country, like even to the U.S., but I think they probably have some in, in European countries. Um, so uh, if you, I know you can hear me now, but when you click on the option to switch to phone call, you won't be able to hear me, but follow the directions for connecting. 
In the meantime, Lawrence, um, let me introduce you and Patrick. So Lawrence, I know um, you've been with Zoomer for the last year and a bit um, as uh, in charge of sort of marketing and promotion and, and getting the word out, um, whereas Patrick is, uh, Patrick is CEO, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, and uh, tell us, uh, in Patrick's absence, just a little bit about Zuber. We'll see if we can get him on um, audio. Okay. Uh, so I'll try to, uh, to to briefly explain what we're doing here. Um, Patrick started the company uh, quite a long time ago. Um, Zuber uh, pretty much found its offspring in um, about seven years ago. And uh, the ultimate goal is to pretty much find a way to uh, get uh, people that don't know anything about 3D or CAD software or complex construction uh, plans to uh, fully understand and experience the design uh, before it's uh, before it's built. Um, obviously, when you're not a professional constructor or designer, you don't. Uh, own any of the materials that are necessary, to, like uh, good laptops, like heavy software, designing software, uh, different viewers. Uh, so putting all that to the table was uh, a pretty uh, big challenge to, to find a way to actually create a situation that people would have access and the possibility to experience designs. Uh, and in November last year, we actually launched the first beta version, and obviously we uh, we got in touch with you. I think it was somewhere around April this year. That's correct. Yeah. So uh, I wrote in my email to everyone, <clears throat> you know, on my list, is uh, when you first, you know, said hello, you know, I went, mm, okay, so you have a 3D visualization solution in a web browser. Okay, that's interesting. But we already have one. We already have BIMX and, you know, obviously a number of different choices. Uh, I said, well, what's different? And you said, well, you know, just there's some differences in the interface, differences in the way that uh, the experience of the model that you'll really understand when you see it. So uh, I said, all right, well, I'll take a meeting. And uh, uh, when we did that, I realized, yeah, this is a really different feeling. So. Um, so Patrick, have you, I don't know if Patrick is connected up on audio yet. Um, looks like he's still trying to. So Lawrence, you want to bring up your screen and just, uh, you know, show us how Zuber works. You can start with the uh, quick pass through the portal. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll see if Patrick. Sure. Can... I will uh, show my screen. Yeah. Uh, I had asked. Yeah. Now we're seeing your screen. Okay. Um, Very good. By the way, uh, if you want to check out Zuver, it's zuver.com, so x u dot com. Um, now, I do have a special link because I've made an arrangement with these people that if you decide that you want to have a subscription, you can try it out for, uh, what, a couple of weeks for free. If you do want a, a subscription, they're very inexpensive, and it'll pay for my lunch every once in a while if uh, a few people um, – you know, sign up. So you can go to bobro.com slash X or bobro.com slash Zuber, B-E-R, and you'll go to where you can register for a free account and then they'll know that I sent you. Um, so no no pressure there, but if you wanted to do it and you wanted them to know that Eric Bobro sent you, uh, do bobro.com slash X. All right, so here we are in the Zuber portal. Yeah, very good. So um, just to, to start off uh, from a brief explanation, um, that this is pretty much your home page. Uh, so uh, what you do is you register, and after you register, you have this situation where uh, you start off. Uh, we have a small wizard to get you started the first time. Um, obviously, you can make your own profile. Uh, you have different projects. There's possibilities to buy. There's uh, guides here that uh, guide you around on the possibilities. And if you get stuck or, or don't know what to do, you can always find a guide that will explain anything. Um, the basis is to uh, have your ARCHICAD model and convert it into our own format. Uh, in order to do that, you will need to download a plugin. 
uh, it just takes a few seconds and then you create your own project uh, I'll just run you through this very quickly uh, what you do is you add a new project uh, give it a name uh, possibly uh, possibly an extra description uh, like your own codes or, or things so you you can easily find it uh, at a later time um, then you make a choice to 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 get it private or public I'll get back to that uh, further on in the demo and you add your file submit it and then you actually have created your own project um, as you saw uh, my homepage already had it prepared so here I have a demo house it's an ArchiCAD model uh, for this webinar, so all I do is open it. Oh, by the way, uh, I've figured out Patrick is in twice, or maybe you're in twice now, and one of your microphones I just opened up and you can talk. Do you uh, hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're getting an echo because you must be, you're I'm on two. Right. Either one. So let, me mute, let me mute the other one. Uh, so, uh, let's see, here is, uh, let me mute this one. All right, now try talking, Patrick. Can I talk now? Yes, yeah. oh, but we're still getting an echo because you have to turn off the volume on the other one. Um, yeah, moment. Yeah, moment. Yeah, moment. All right, try it now. Now I'm now I'm on my Mac, Eric. That's better. <laughs> All right. Um, now, uh, your visual has frozen, but I, we are hearing you nicely, so we'll accept that. Um, so before we get into this environment, so Patrick, welcome. I'm glad we were able to at least um, hear you. And Thank for you. some reason, your, your webcam is frozen. I don't know why. Um, if you, um, But uh, go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about Zuver, just uh, background, because Lauren said that uh, the company started about six or seven years ago and uh, tell us just a little bit about your background and what your mission is. Yeah, correct. We, we started seven years ago. I was uh, 10 years ago involved with uh, real estate properties and mostly to sell them online. And I had one, uh, one missing point that, uh, that uh, I saw that a lot of people didn't understand any floor plans or um, 3D models. So I was thinking, let's uh, let's start to think about a solution for this. And uh, I wanted to have a very easy solution, which means that uh, at that time there was not so much 3D. Uh, so I was doing a lot of research uh, how we could start. And um, uh, some points were, uh, who were important was that I wanted to show 3D models in the browser. And uh, and an important part was that we made our own engine, so not on Unity or, or the other ones. Uh, it must be very useful, user-friendly, because yeah, it was for people who didn't have any cut, cut knowledge. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to create is that we <clears throat> that other people uh, could work together in a 3D model. model. So uh, mm -hmm. that, that has a little bit of marketing uh, part also. Uh, we, we wanted to build a, a lot of a lot of interaction. So yeah, my uh, my research uh, started. I found a programmer, and uh, I give him one year the chance to show me uh, to turn around a 3D model in the browser, and he did. And uh, that was very surprising. And we uh, we went further further. Uh, at the moment, we have a team of 25 people who are working on our tool. Uh, as as Lauren said, we, we launched a year ago. We did a lot of uh, testing with beta and alpha. And uh, at the moment, we have already around 1,900 uh, uh, users on our platform. And um, we're developing and developing and coming uh, and for the future. We, uh, yeah, we create a lot of nice features more. I think... Uh, okay. That is a little bit the background where I started and where we are now. Yeah, that's great. Now, Patrick, um, uh, I open up your line as an attendee, which is fine. We've been able to hear you. I'm going to make you a panelist, which may allow you to share your webcam from the Mac. So I'm going to, you'll be disconnected for about five seconds while I do that. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can. 
All right. So uh, you're now you're now set up as a panelist there, um, and uh, if you want to try to show your webcam, that's fine. But let's move on um, uh, as well. So Lawrence, uh, you've left us poised at an interesting place where we're seeing <laughs> the model. It came from Archicad, is from what I understood, um, yeah. and you see a human figure. Now, what's interesting here, this is optional, like you can turn on or off the human figure, but look, see what happens in your own experience for all of you watching as you see the person um, uh, come in or move through the space. It's a very interesting experience to see a human figure. And you, they'll, they have different avatars, so, you know, male and female, et cetera. And, and uh, so, but just see how that different that feels. Yeah. So. Um, this is pretty much uh, as soon as you've uploaded uh, your XR file, which is our format, uh, you've created your project and uh, you have a starting point for your avatar. Uh, we added the avatar to give people a feel for space. Uh, you can use uh, the arrow keys or uh, A, W, S, and D to walk. Uh, if you press the shift button at the same time, you can move a little quicker. Um, Obviously, there's uh, uh, certain boundaries in your uh, design that uh, everything's massive. Like uh, here, I can't go through any walls or doors. So what we did is uh, we added a, what we call a ghost mode. So if you walk and you press G at the same time, uh, we take away physical boundaries that cause you to enter the model. Um, you can use arrow keys to look around or uh, use your mouse and see around. Um, everything has its physical uh, situation. So what we do is we walk up the stairs. Uh, every st You don't have to actually add any specific data or anything to in order to do that uh, because you can just simply enter. Um, we recognize the stairs and all other uh, bases and make sure that uh, yeah our avatar doesn't run through it automatically causing people to actually experience your design as if it was there and as if you're walking around so now, I will let me point out, this is a this is a sample model and there was no railing on one part of the the, the stair uh, uh, edge so uh, I, I asked him about it <laughs> and uh, I said yeah this is one we just threw together quickly uh, yeah. So uh, what, what I'm going to do here now is uh, I, I go on to the balcony to get a feel for the area. And uh, as you may have spotted just a minute ago, I, this is actually a public project, which is uh, open URL. Um, and I sent this off to Patrick. And as you see, you get your own avatar there. Um, and you can see each other. There's no need for any downloads. There's no need for any extra installs or whatever. It's just a simple browser. It works best in Chrome or Firefox as a browser. Uh, make sure everything's up to date. Uh, no specific hardware uh, requirements. As long as it's about four years old, uh, no older than four years, uh, that's due to the job drivers. Oh, let's um, something here. So, uh, Patrick, back up a little bit where, where we can see you. And I'm going to make you presenter. And let's just do a quick see if Patrick from his screen can see. Uh, so if you back up a little bit, Patrick. I'm just, I'm just using it on the other uh, laptop, Eric. So it's not here, but I can oh. open it in one moment. <laughs> OK. Um, well, we, uh, all right, well, we can move around, actually, then, um, then just Patrick, just go go into the building. I know you were going to arrange to meet and uh, and then show each other things. So this is really cool that whether it's with a client or a consultant, um, you can be in different locations and can share the same space and actually then point to each other. And in fact, they even have a voice mode where instead of relying on a phone call or a meeting software like this, uh, you, you can click the microphone icon and um, just use the Zoover environment as the framework. Um, now, I'll, I'll point out that uh, right now the, the avatars are identical, um, but they uh, have a number of avatars that are uh, available, and they're just finalizing 
the um, ability to choose your own avatar. Um, and so right now it looks funny. We have twins, but uh, it will be that'll go away very soon. It looks kind of cute, though. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> now, um, as you see here, uh, what we have is a, an interface. And obviously, you've been seeing a few a few of these buttons at the bottom. Um, here is our home button, which brings us back to the starting point. Uh, we have some different views. So uh, this is the more familiar view to you where I turn off the avatar. Uh, I can look up and down. Uh, looks like someone found our uh, URL. I don't know who, but uh, so what like you do Pat Patrick, you've come in through the other one? Yeah, it's the other one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so now we got three avatars. Um, here you got, we have a voice module, which uh, is, if you, you can turn it on or off, uh, obviously now we have our voice interaction already, but it would be very nice for, uh, for example, marketing purposes that uh, you can visit your portfolio and be there to receive potential customers um, and uh, instantly be able to talk to them instead of them needing to call you or you need to do the call yourself. Uh, so that's an interesting way of new new type of marketing um, for lots of people to explore. Then to go actually to the more functional features, uh, there's uh, measurement tools so we can measure, uh, for example, some furniture. Um, here it's in meters and for the U.S. Uh, it's not in feet or yards. Uh, it's all on our metric system. Um, you can measure anything. Um, this is an interesting feature as to, okay, we're going to meet and we're now talking to each other. Uh, Patrick can obviously hear me, but now I would like to uh, have a discussion about, uh, let's say this window. Um, obviously when he's at his own uh, home, office, wherever, different, a different location, he doesn't know what I'm pointing at. But uh, he's able to see this laser pointer, and as you see here, he uh, can actually confirm that uh, he's pointing at the exact same spot as where I'm pointing, uh, causing us to actually do a good discussion about how I experienced this uh, design as a, a homeowner or get a feel for the area. Uh, then to get your mapping, we got a mini map here. Uh, this is, has a large area, so if you want to actually get a good floor plan visible there, uh, you may not, you may want to reduce a little bit of the area around it, um, but it does give you a good idea of the situation. Um, if I want to do, say, save certain uh, certain images very quickly, here's how you can make a simple print screen. Uh, it instantly shows me the image. Uh, and I can copy paste this. It's a JPEG file and with an email, add a small note on a situation. Uh, if I turn avatars on or off, uh, when it's off, it will not be in the image. Um, and you can do that at any given time. Um, then in order to get more feel for a light situation, uh, we have default lighting at the moment um, that I can change at any time. Um, there's a fairly bright sign um, that you can move around to get a feel for the area. It's something we're also working on improving like uh, the lighting but also shaders and shadows so you get a better visual experience in the future. Uh, that's uh, something that we're working on. Um, you can change resolutions. Uh, it, it will not do a whole lot for your interface on your laptop. Uh, but it will increase in performance on, let's say, older hardware. Obviously, there's uh, what this, we've been designing this from a customer perspective, and people like to share with friends or whoever uh, is interested uh, what their what their experience is going to be like, and uh, obviously that's going to go through social media a lot of the time. Um, and there's a possibility to cut plane. Uh, I, I will save it for now, but here you will get the menu, get all the degrees out, um, all the different, uh, um, what's it called, Eric, the 
it's not an axe or the, uh, what's the axes, called? The axes X, Y, Z, and uh, oh, they, yeah. so for, it is the axis. For, cut, for cutting planes or, or for section cutaways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, there's ways in order to highlight. So uh, this is obviously something only the person using uh, the interface is seeing. So the other person is actually not seeing this situation. But uh, let's say you're having a discussion with your client in your office or at a different location. It may help you uh, have the right conversation uh, with your client. Uh, now what I'm going to do now is I go back to the home place uh, and show you a small feature uh, that we're now seeing uh, our customers using is layers. So um, all your layer structures from ArchiCAD or Revit, uh, we also support Revit and, and SketchUp. Um, is you can turn all layers on and off so if you want to so, show certain things from a, a, a different perspective this is the way to do it um, it could also help uh, that's what we get back from from our clients now is that let's say there's ha well what is the situation of the construction uh, within the building or within the design and to get a good explanation on not necessarily any specific hardware. Uh, this is the way to do it very quickly. Um, and well, uh, I'll just show you the top from the perspective here uh, to give you a, big, a bit of the feel. So this is the area. Uh, you can orbit around um, from any place, really. Um, there's ways to zoom in. OK. Um, you can it, just exactly the way it works with ArchiCAD, you know, orbit around, zoom into the model. You can do all that. Uh, it's just we have the avatar to get a feel for the space. Uh, if there's other avatars in your design, whenever um, someone's there, other than you, you're going to be able to see them. So you see here is Patrick's avatar. Um, then to uh, quickly move on to uh, something else to give you a feel like what else you could do. Uh, we have a default plaza that is available on our homepage so anyone who can registers uh, can walk around here. Uh, this is uh, a, a simple design really, but you get a feel for like, okay, if you're building a bigger plan, there's ways to experience a full area. So uh, for people in the United States, you may uh, know that statue a little. Um, all these, for this, uh, these are instructions, but they're actually JPEG images that we put in the design. And as soon as we convert it, you can see anything. Uh, let me walk into the billing real quick. Um, somehow it d does slow down a little bit in this uh, go to meeting. I don't know. So the same as here, uh, we recognize the stairs, so we can easily go up. Um, and we put this museum all together, just pretty much making it a, a real life construction of our platform. So you, get, you can walk around here step by step. It's just a way of, uh, a new way of what, you know, different things you could do with your designs um, to get it uh, set. So, we get very good response from clients here, uh, from different architects that actually say, okay, so now I really get a feel for the area. Uh, obviously, it's it's more in a sketch situation where, where, where we have discussions, uh, where there's ideas exchanged, uh, people get a feel for uh, new possibilities, and it's very easy to use. It, it, it's always, you know, you don't need any heavy software, you don't, all you need is just an internet connection. And uh, you, you go from your model to this interactive interface within a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you- uh, we, in, um, So there are uh, some comments and questions here. Okay. Um, so what benefits, and Noel asks, what benefits does this have over our kids 3D interface or twin motion? So since 
Um, obviously, Lawrence, you're not as familiar with the ARCAD interface um, and uh, twin motion. I know you haven't see, hadn't seen uh, particularly until today. Um, no, I did see it obviously. Uh, so what I'll just say is that the main distinguishing features, at least for me right now, is the avatar, which at first when I heard of it, I thought, ah, oh, you know, so you have a human figure in there, and um, it actually, to me, makes a big difference in terms of just feeling the space. And they have done a really uh, interesting uh, job of having it hover over, you know, the shoulder. But when you get into tight quarters and you're turning around or you're going down a staircase or something like that, it comes in closer. And so there's a subtle um, subtlety to this. It's not just literally a fixed distance away. Um, and so, you know, there's some really Let's nice. I can demonstrate that because if I walk back here, it'll come towards you. Um, so uh, it just does feel to me different. It feels just more understandable um, than when you're floating around in this ghostly way. Not that you can't see a design without it, but it, it just feels different. Um, second is the ability to do collaboration. So uh, when you are into, you know, two different people, two different places or three, um, you can potentially meet and point out things. Now, I mean, you can always say, can you turn around here, show me that window, you know, et cetera. But uh, the ability to each of you independently be looking at things and then uh, say, I want to show you something and then use a laser pointer uh, essentially to point at things. That's a very interesting effect. And I think once they have the multiple avatars with different, you know, different human forms uh, available publicly, then that'll become even more interesting. Um, okay. It is in a web browser, so it is uh, certainly um, something that uh, makes it easy to share with clients. Now, Graphisoft does have the web browser um, option here. You you have one where you can embed it into a website. You have um, a website with that uh, available. I think you showed it to me. Uh, yeah, but I, we just to be honest, I, I don't have it. Uh, Right here, I don't know straight from my um from my head, but maybe uh, uh, uh yeah, I I will explain the context of the situation. It's an interior designer from Australia that uh pretty much put up a portfolio where there's a few SketchUp designs, and she added an extra button there, uh, just simply okay, immerse in the design, uh, and it's purely a marketing perspective. Uh, so you can have a look at impressions of the situation that she designed and also walk around it uh, without her having to do any interaction. Now that is, uh, and we, we've we tested like uh, the, uh, the controls of our viewer, like just putting up the interface without telling anyone anything. And pretty, uh, pretty much about 95% of the people just instantly starts to use arrow keys or AWSND to walk around. Now, that is a big difference compared to like uh, different products like uh, Twinmotion or, or any other visualization tool. Uh, there's usually more work and you need some sort of explanation to get started. Okay, so uh, a natural intuitive feel and an interface that's uh, easy to understand, I think is very helpful. Um, so uh, clearly, you know, your visualization is more limited uh, I know you're working on uh, improving some of the textures and, and uh, other rendering. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a constant thing because uh, we want to get the best visual uh, visual interface as we can. Uh, the thing is, like, uh, the browser really limits us to what we can do and what the browser can handle. Uh, Luckily for us, the browsers let us do more and more and more every now and then. Uh, and obviously it, it creates possibilities for us to improve uh, the quality of the image. By the way, I'm gonna take back the uh, presentation. I'll just bring up Steve Pribble's project in uh, Zuber. So let me go and make myself presenter here. Um, and so, uh, so we were looking at um, Steve's project in uh, Craftsoft BIMX. Now here I've got the same project in um, what do you call it in Zuber, uh, you know, so I can you know walk and 
go in through here and so take a little getting used to the um, interface but basically you know like what we were just seeing so it's a very very natural feeling it's different than the um, uh, than what we're seeing here now I'm going to use the G key to just go through the wall here there um, so now I'm in this and uh, you know now I can walk through the space so I just want to point out that this and and how you saw the camera just recede or as a, the avatar move forward um, that it uh, is a very natural feeling um, as you're doing this it's almost like cutting from one um, visual to another you see how it gets close and then further um, so and I'm moving around you know just my orientation so I'm not going to say that this is the um, you know that you know this is far superior I'll just say that it has some very interesting different feeling than uh, than going through this here let's just go into this other room uh, here Um, so just a very different feeling. Oh, there's a human figure. <laughs> okay, so that's one of, one of the ones that was in, in the model, right? It's interesting. I would want to go up and say hello, right? Um, uh, and I'm going to back up and we'll see if we can go up the stairs. I think, I think it should work. Um, not to dwell on it, but uh, let's see. How do I go sideways? Um, I use the right mouse button to go sideways. Um, if I want to go... Uh, just with your mouse also mouse um so you now i'm trying to move sideways all right i don't quite quite get that so i'll just move i just turned and then go up here so i'm going up the stairs and of course it just feels very natural going up the stairs you know just the view we have and if i rotate around i can look down here over the shoulder of the avatar um so uh, Again, it's it, we're not saying that the graphics are better than ArchiCAD. They're you know getting relatively close. They're nowhere near twin motion right now. Um, but the feeling of being in the space with the avatar, and then of course having multiple avatars be able to meet and discuss things and point at things um, is a very uh, attractive thing. And then the fact that it is in the browser, sort of naturally and easily, um, is a benefit. So, um, any, anything else before we finish? Either questions from the audience or uh, comments from uh, Patrick and, and uh, Lawrence. Uh, for yeah, for no, example, no. Eric, uh, we have an architect here in Holland. They do around 700 projects a year. And they use our tool now with, I think, 100 clients. And even their clients are calling us and saying, "Hey, listen, can I can I keep this model because I like it so much?" Uh, so we get really good response from the clients of the architect, and I think there there is wh where we made the tool for, it. and I think that's a very important feedback. So, uh, uh, well, something I may want to add to that is that one of the things that we uh, uh, got back from architects using our tool now for uh, for a longer period of time is that they see that the quality of the feedback they get on their designs is actually improved, causing them to get through the steps of designing a little faster just because people tend to understand just a little more, a little quicker, or tend to be able to check things at their own time. Um, so we, we haven't quite figured out really what it is, but yeah, the result is that they're actually going through the stages a little faster. <laughs> okay, let's see if there are any questions. So Ian asks, can, an av can avatar A controlled by person A talk to avatar B controlled by person B? Yes. So using that little microphone icon, if, so if, if you just said, hey, um, I'll send you a link, and instead of opening up a go to meeting or a zoom or something like that and sharing a screen you would basically say go to this link to open up the zoover file now you're both in the zoover file you start in the same you know sort of start point and then you'll be able to see each other's avatar and then there's a microphone icon and uh, you can literally just 
turn that on and then you can talk to each other. So you're essentially using Zoover as a, sort of like Skype or something else for the talking while you're sharing a design. Correct. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Um, I think those are the main things there. Uh, yeah, there was a question earlier about do you need a super fast graphic card to view the model in twin motion? And the answer from, from uh, Mark was, yeah, you do need a pretty powerful computer to work, to get the full benefit of something like twin motion. And that's always going to be the case. You know, doing some heavy rendering um, is going to require more horsepower. Uh, obviously, here we have a nice middle ground where the rendering is realistic enough that people can get a, a feel for the space. Um, and yet the focus is on the interaction. The focus is on experiencing the space rather than, wow, look at those trees moving in the wind. Um, that being said, you know, I, I look forward to seeing Lawrence and Patrick what, what you end up developing over the next few months and years uh, because I think uh, you have some unique uh, approaches to collaboration and, and to communication that are well yeah. worth uh, developing. Um, Thank you. So uh, to finish up, <clears throat> if you're interested in Zoover, you can just go to zoover.com, but if you do want to sign up for a trial, a uh, free trial, uh, and you want them to know that you came from me, then go to bobro.com forward slash X or forward slash Zoover, X-U-V-E-R, and it'll take you to a registration page. It's free, um, and you're not making any commitment, but you then just uh, are able to download the, the plugin um, and the add-on and just install it. And, uh, you know, within five minutes, you'll be able to uh, just export your file and get it into Zoover and play around with it. So, um, so let's see if there's any final comments or questions here. Um, okay, so, uh, uh, all right. So Noah points out that Twin Motion is free for a while for Arcade users, that's true. And that's really awesome that they're providing that. Um, so again, uh, Twin Motion is an interesting option, very powerful visually. Uh, I think Zoover is interesting because of the feeling of being in the space with the avatar and the, and the ability to collaboratively explore the space, you know, two people or potentially even more than two people at the same time and communicate and talk, uh, point to things, etc. cetera. So, um, and the fact that it works in a browser with no fancy hardware, you know, is a big plus. So uh, any final words from Patrick and Lawrence? Just, uh, I just want to say uh, thank you for having us on this webinar. Um, I hope we've, uh, we've shined a, a little new light on visualization and, and experiencing space. And um, yeah, if there's any questions uh, or feedback, we're uh, happy to help anyone uh, or ask questions. Uh, we got a support email address that's uh, uh, very well uh, read, which is uh, support at uh, We have a chat possibility on our website um, that way uh, where we always get back to you. So uh, yeah, feel free, feel free to, to get started. Okay, and Patrick? Yeah. I, uh, the words from Lawrence are enough, but I want to thank you very much for the time, uh, Eric. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, what time is it there? It's almost midnight there. So uh, yeah, thank you for, <laughs> for making room in your schedule by staying up late. Um, so uh, I'll say goodbye to everyone. Uh, we had uh, a good crowd here today. And of course, this uh, recording will be posted um, on the Arcade user website as well as my YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any follow-up questions or comments from me, if you like this, if you want more, you know, things that are comparing different options, like in this case, different visualization options, um, you know, you have some suggestions for future Archicad user webinars, um, all ears. Um, and if you haven't paid attention, I'll just make one little tiny plug at the end. If, you're, if you've ever wanted to get quantities and costs reports from your model, then check out the new ARCHICAD Estimating Solution at archicadestimating.com. This is the ARC 5D solution that I've been working with John Hogarth to create. And so this is something <clears throat> we just launched a, a couple of weeks ago with our course um, on quantity and cost estimating in ARCHICAD. So just
just a, a little tip about one of the other projects that I'm really passionate about right now that um, I think is a great new solution for ARCHICAD users, um, leveraging the power of ARCHICAD further and easier than before. So thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Mark and uh, Steve and Steve. And bye for now. Thanks for watching.